As the war in Ukraine drags on into its third year, the introduction of Western-supplied F-16 fighter jets has sparked intense global discussion. Can these Cold War-era American jets truly stand up to Russia's elite air dominance platforms, the Su-35s? At first glance, the matchup looks unequal. The F-16s arriving in Ukraine, largely consisting of older models donated by European NATO allies, lack many of the high-end upgrades found in modern variants. Most are F-16AM BM models, based on Block 20 or Block 30 airframes upgraded in the 1990s, and while these aircraft are still capable, they were never intended to match a fifth-generation adversary in one-on-one -on -one combat. In contrast, Russia's Su-35S is a true air superiority beast larger, faster, equipped with thrust vectoring engines for super maneuverability, and armed with long-range, radar-guided R-77-1 and R-37M missiles that can reach targets more than 200 kilometers away. The key technological difference lies in radar and missile range. The Su-35's Irbis-E radar is capable of detecting and tracking targets up to 400 kilometers away in optimal conditions, giving Russian pilots a significant advantage in beyond visual range engagements. Ukrainian F-16s, by comparison, mostly use older mechanically scanned radar systems, which offer significantly less range and tracking fidelity. Their primary missile, the AM-120 AMRAM, is a capable weapon, but most of the versions sent to Ukraine, likely the AM-120C5 or earlier, have effective ranges around 75 to 100 kilometers, far less than their Russian counterparts. But this isn't just a battle of hardware. Modern air combat is defined just as much by networked warfare pilot skill, and tactical integration as it is by the technical specs of any given aircraft. Ukrainian pilots have trained extensively with NATO forces over the past year, practicing Western-style tactics that emphasize flexible engagement, data sharing, and battlefield coordination. They benefit from satellite reconnaissance, real-time ground radar feeds, and potentially AWACS, airborne warning and control systems, from NATO allies that even without crossing into Ukrainian airspace, can paint a clearer picture of the skies. This integration allows F-16s to perform hit-and-run strikes, intercept cruise missiles, and support ground operations without necessarily engaging directly with Su-35s. According to defense analysts, this is the real strategic role of the F-16 in Ukraine, not to dominate the skies in classic dogfights, but to complement Ukraine's broader defense posture. Speaking in early 2025, former Ukrainian Air Force spokesperson Yuri Ignet admitted that the F-16s would struggle in direct engagements with the Su-35, noting the Russian jet's superiority in radar, missile range, and close quarters agility. Therefore, Ukrainian air planners are reportedly focusing their new jets on defensive tasks like intercepting drones and cruise missiles, launching standoff strikes with precision-guided munitions, and suppressing enemy air defenses using AGM-88 HARM missiles.
Still, in the context of the battlefield, no jet fights alone. The Su-35, while advanced, also operates within the limitations of Russian battlefield doctrine, which often prioritizes centralized control and lacks the same level of real-time data fusion seen in NATO air forces. In fact, some Russian pilots have complained that even with superior aircraft, poor situational awareness and limited coordination with ground forces reduce their overall combat effectiveness. On the other hand, Ukraine's smaller but highly mobile force, supported by NATO intelligence and flexible tactics, can sometimes punch above its weight. What Ukraine needs, according to many Western defense observers, is not just more F-16s, but the right kind of F-16s. Upgraded Block 50, 52 Plus, or Block 70 Viper variants would provide AESA radar systems, improved electronic warfare suites, and the ability to launch longer-range missiles like the AM-120D. These enhancements would narrow the gap with the Su-35 significantly, particularly in beyond visual range scenarios. Even without these upgrades, the arrival of F-16s marks a psychological and strategic turning point. It forces Russia to devote more resources to defending its airspace, disrupts their operations behind the front lines, and signals Ukraine's growing integration with NATO. It also raises the stakes in any potential escalation, as Western-made aircraft, flown by Ukrainian pilots, possibly aided by Western intelligence, go head-to-head -head with one of Russia's most prized weapons. In summary, while Russia's Su-35 outmatches Ukraine's current F-16s in raw performance, especially in radar reach, missile range, and maneuverability, the real battlefield power dynamic is more complex. With proper support, strategic deployment, and continued Western training, Ukraine's F-16s are not meant to win dogfights against Su-35s. They're meant to avoid them entirely while achieving broader tactical goals. The war in the skies over Ukraine won't be decided by who has the flashiest fighter jet, but by who can integrate, adapt, and outmaneuver their opponent in the fog of war. This is not a Hollywood-style Top Gun battle. It's a modern war, where networks, sensors, and strategy trump speed and firepower. And in that arena, Ukraine's F-16s may yet prove to be more than the sum of their parts. In the end, the clash between Ukraine's F-16s and Russia's Su-35s isn't just a battle between machines, it's a contest of strategy, support, and survival in the world's most closely watched air war. While the Su-35 clearly leads in technical specs, the story doesn't end there. What truly matters is how these aircraft are used, the intelligence behind them, and the resilience of the people flying them. As Ukraine continues to adapt and integrate Western tools into its defense, the skies above Eastern Europe remain a dynamic and unpredictable front. 
For more in-depth analysis like this, stay tuned with Insaid, where insight meets defense.